The objective of this video series is to provide you with a good understanding of the Easy Balance Dynamic Balancing software. In this video, we will explore the Rotor Setup screen. This screen is the starting point for everything we do in the Easy Balance software. The Easy Balance splash screen shows some important information, for instance, software version, balancing application, customer service contact, the licensed customer info, and calibration date info. Once we click Start, a systems diagnostics is performed and the results are shown. We will see, for instance, the firmware, the hardware version, speed range, and the software version, product ID, and so on. And once we have this, we click I agree, and we will come to the Rotor Setup screen. And we will go through each element in this Rotor Setup screen and explain what we can do here. Each screen of the EasyBalance software has a title bar, clearly indicating the name and purpose of that screen. Here in the Rotor Setup screen, we see the software version, the name of the balancing machine, which is optional but very useful in multi-machine operations, and if the software is set to soft bearing or hard bearing mode. Next, we will look at selecting the Rotor configuration. There are six possible Rotor configurations in two-plane mode, and three configurations in single plane mode. We will go through each of these settings and show what they do in the rotor setup image in the center of the home screen. The first configuration is the typical configuration for a two plane balancing job. The rotor is supported by two pedestals and both correction planes are between these pedestals. Next is the dual overhang to the left, followed by the same for the right. The dumbbell configuration is next, with both correction planes outside the pedestals. And lastly, we have the combination of one plane between and one plane overhung, both for left and right. On the left of the rotor image, we can select our units of measure, both for mass and distance. For instance, we can work in gram and millimeter, or gram and inch, or any combination thereof. Notice that the dimensions and unbalanced tolerance information are automatically converted to the units we have chosen. Whatever units we have chosen will be stored together with all the other rotor setup information in the rotor name as indicated in the rotor name drop-down list above the center image. The center of this screen shows a rotor image according to the rotor configuration chosen previously. Entering rotor data is easy and intuitive. We define correction radius, tolerance, and the so-called ABC dimensions by typing directly into the data fields. For instance, if we want to define a rotor as having 8 inch of the correction radius on the left and 6 inches on the right, we just go ahead and type these numbers in. We also can define the tolerance here if we want to, or we can use the tolerance calculator, which allows us to enter rotor mass uh, as defined in rotor journal load and uh, we can select a balancing quality standard and the service speed and we can calculate the tolerance and it will be calculated and automatically put into these tolerance fields and we can also then define our ABC dimensions and this is all we need to define our rotor. Some balancing machines allow you to run the rotor in either forward or reverse direction. You can define the direction of rotation simply by clicking this directional arrow. Unbalanced corrections can be made in many different ways, but it all boils down to either adding mass at the light spot or removing mass at the heavy spot. The principal method of correction can be defined here in the rotor setup screen by clicking the Add Remove icons directly at the rotor. You can do this independently for both planes. You can also easily change this later in the Results screen by clicking the Add Remove icons there. Setting the rotor for single plane or two plane balance is as simple as clicking the one plane or two plane radio button. You can also define static couple mode here. Selecting tooling compensation and or key compensation can be done with these drop down selections. We will explain tooling compensation and key compensation in a separate video. 
The result of each unbalanced measurement can be presented in different forms. For instance, the software lets you show the unbalanced result in large numbers called a mount and angle display. You can also select a polar diagram display and even show the result in a three-dimensional rotor image. Sometimes it can be very important to check for any resonance conditions, either in the rotor itself or the balancing machine or even in the foundation of the machine. This can be done very easily by selecting a body diagram. A body diagram shows the amount and phase simultaneously while sweeping over a certain RPM range. Any of the settings we have talked about so far are saved with the current rotor name and can be recalled from rotor memory later. To do this, either select the rotor name from the drop-down list or use the familiar Windows File Manager. Each and every balancing job is automatically recorded in a balancing log. To view the log, simply click See Log, recall the rotor from memory, and you have the result. You can even recreate the result display so that, for instance, at a later time you can print a balancing report without having to go through measurement again. The search button can be used to find a specific rotor name. You can use a search string to find any rotor which contains that string and it will be recalled from memory. Thank you for watching and please feel free to provide feedback or to request a tutorial based on your specific interest.